very good morning. You're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are this morning's headlines. Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari accorded state welcome on arrival at Brunei's uh, Darussalam agreements on defense cooperation, health, and education to be inked. Jammu and Kashmir governor to meet BJP and PDP leaders today to seek clarity on stand on government formation in the state. State has been under governor's rule since Mufti Mohammad Saeed's death. Thirteen college students drown at a beach in Raigad in Maharashtra while they were on a picnic. Navy and Coast Guard engage in rescue operations as many students are still untraced. World Health Organization declares Zika an emergency, calls it an extraordinary event. However, no travel restrictions imposed. And first votes in the 2016 US presidential elections are being cast. Process underway in Iowa and will be repeated nationally to select candidates to run in November's race for the top job. Well, Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari, who is on a five-day visit to Brunei and Thailand, arrived at Brunei's Darussalam on Monday. It's the first ever visit by an Indian Vice President to the country. Agreements on defence cooperation, health and education will be signed. Discussions will be held on cooperation in civil aviation, space, trade and investment besides hydrocarbons and information and communication. Here's more. Vice President Mohammed Hamid Ansari landed at the Brunei Darussalam airport on Monday evening to begin his five-day tour to Brunei Darussalam and Thailand. His visit is an endeavor to further strengthen ties with the two Asian countries. The tour also assumes significance since it is the first ever visit to Brunei Darussalam by the Vice President of India. Speaking on board the special plane, the Vice President said that both India and Brunei are exploring possibilities of increasing trade in oil and natural gas. MOS Home Affairs Haribhai Parthibhai Chaudhary is also accompanying the Vice President on the two-nation tour. We buy about a million dollar worth of oil from them. They don't have much of gas available for us because their gas is already contracted out on locked up places. We are exploring with them the possibility of using their gas locally in Brunei for setting up of a fertilizer plant. Some discussions on that has taken place, maybe we'll discuss a little more. Emphasizing further on India-Brunei ties, the Vice President said that Brunei is an important ASEAN country and they want to further deepen ties with India. Earlier, former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh had visited Brunei in October 2013 to attend the 11th ASEAN India Summit and 8th EAS Summit. The Sultan of Brunei has been on a state-level visit to India twice in May 2008 and before that in September 1992. During the visit, Vice President Mohammed Hamid Ansari will be paying a visit to the Sultan Omar al Saifuddin Mosque on Tuesday, followed by his meeting with the Crown Prince and later with the Sultan of Brunei at the Sultan's Palace. The Vice President was accorded a state welcome soon after landing at the capital city Bandar Seri Begawa on Monday. He was later called upon by the President and Executive Committee of Brunei India Friendship Association in the capital city. Earlier, speaking to the press on board the special aircraft, the Vice President expressed hope that the upcoming budget session of Parliament may not witness a logjam. The question is of developing an attitude in which all sections of the House consider it more productive to discuss, debate and decide rather than otherwise. Vice President Ansari is scheduled to deliver a lecture on India-Brunei relations at the Brunei University campus on Wednesday. Vice President Mohammed Ahmed Ansari arrives in Brunei capital, beginning his five days visit to Thailand and Brunei to strengthen further the already existing strong ties with these two countries. It will be first ever visit by Vice President of India to Brunei.
Going on now, the government has called an all-party meeting on February 4th to discuss the duration of the budget session of parliament in view of assembly elections in five states. The meeting will be held before the Cabinet Committee on Parliamentary Affairs meets to finalize a broad schedule of the session, which is likely to begin on February 23rd. In a letter to opposition leaders, Parliamentary Affairs Minister M. Venkaya Naidu said that he would uh, like to seek their advice regarding ens ensuing budget session that is coinciding with the election schedule of five states. Governments also say that there are uh, precedents when the budget session had been held without a break but declined to divulge whether the all-party meeting has been called to achieve a consensus for a similar approach. Efforts to reach out to the opposition came at a time when the opposition parties have decided to corner it on issues like imposition of President's rule in Congress-ruled Arunachal Pradesh and the suicide by a Dalit student in Hyderabad Central University. Well, Jammu and Kashmir Governor N.N. Vora has asked Alliance partners BJP and PDP to clarify their stand on government formation by today. This comes after meetings by both the PDP and the BJP to discuss PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti's hardened stance regarding her erstwhile alliance partner, Yasmo. The Jammu and Kashmir unit of the BJP held a meeting on Monday, a day after People's Democratic Party indicated a rethink in its position on the ruling alliance in the state. PDP President Mehbooba Mufti on Sunday hardened her stand on some issues that has insisted on written assurances from the BJP. कश्मीर के वर्तमान जो परिस्थिति है उसके बारे में हमारे स्टेट यूनिट का कोर कमेटी का मीटिंग आज सुबह जम्मू में संपन्न हुई गवर्नर साहब हमारे स्टेट प्रेसिडेंट को कल सरकार बनाने के विषय में चर्चा करने के लिए बुलाए थे कल शाम को हमारे स्टेट प्रेसिडेंट उनसे मिलेंगे तो बीच में सेंट्रल लीडरशिप को इस विषय में पूरी जानकारी देना अपना विचार देना और बाकी यहाँ जो भी सेंट्रल लीडरशिप का जो मार्गदर्शन होगा उसके हिसाब से कल गवर्नर से मिलकर पार्टी का राय रखना कल माननीय गवर्नर साहब ने अध्यक्ष होने के नाते मुझे फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट के लिए बुलाया है और उसके विषय पे बात करने के लिए बुलाया है उसी विषय को लेकर आज हमारी बैठक थी According to media reports, Mehbooba warns withdrawal of the controversial Armed Forces Special Powers Act from some parts of the state, resumption of dialogue with Kashmir separatists, among other issues on which the BJP is not comfortable. मात्र 10 महीने का समय हुआ है, छः वर्ष के लिए जंडा फ़िलाइंस बना है। Definitely, we will try to cover each and everything. और हमारी कोशिश रे ये रहेगी, ये minimum common minimum program होता है। इसको छोड़कर भी कुछ चीजें ऐसी होती हैं जो बढ़ाई जा सकती हैं। the PDP and the BJP formed a government last year after months of haggling in the state which produced a fractured verdict. The PDP has 27 seats in the Assembly, followed by the BJP's 25 in the 87-member state legislature in December 2015 elections. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the Supreme Court has said that reports in which Arunachal Pradesh Governor J.P. Rajkoa recommended President's rule don't have to be shared by him. While recalling its notice to the governor, it also cancelled its earlier request for a copy of the documents. It has, however, rejected the centre's opposition to giving documents seized from the deposed Chief Minister Nabam Tuki and his cabinet colleagues. The Supreme Court has recalled its notice to the Arunachal Pradesh governor seeking his report to the president recommending central rule in the state. It, however, rejected the centre's opposition to giving documents seized from the deposed Chief Minister Nabam Tuki and his cabinet colleagues. While recalling its notice to the governor, the five-judge constitutional bench said the governor enjoys complete immunity in court proceedings. The notice was recalled after Attorney General Mukul Rohatki pointed to the constitutional position of the governor. On an objection by the Attorney General, as well as our side representing the governor, that under Article 361 of the Constitution, no notice can be issued to either the President of India or to the governor of his state for anything done by him under the discharge of his duties. The learned judges withdrew the notice which was issued to the Honorable Governor on 27th as well as in the fresh petitions also which were filed today, no notice has been issued to the Governor of the state. The Supreme Court also issued a notice on former Arunachal Pradesh Chief Minister Nabam Tuki's fresh petition protesting President's rule in the state. This is an ongoing process. It's heard today, it's going to be heard tomorrow. So it is inappropriate for me to say anything on the merits. All that I can say is that the court has thought it fit that a challenge to the whole issue cannot be efficacious, cannot be real, cannot be genuine, cannot be strong, unless and until basic documents are made available. I think it is regrettable that the government of India 
took a stand that even basic documents should not be released. The Arunachal governor, who has been accused by the Congress of using the Raj Bhavan as headquarters of the BJP and the RSS, has said he was working within the ambit of the constitution and that he was nobody's agent. The rest of the things, those are in the Supreme Court, subject in the Supreme Court, the Honorable Supreme Court, the five member banks, they are seizing all the issues and uh, obviously, so they are taking note of that. The Honorable Supreme Court wanted the information to be given, to reports to be given, all have been given to the Honorable Supreme Court. Peace of the five member judges in still cover. The Supreme Court has given the center time until Friday to make copies and return forthwith all seized private letters files and documents of former chief minister, ministers and parliamentary secretaries. The court said that this was the basic fairness level required for them to assail the promulgation. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the quota protests in Andhra Pradesh took a serious turn after a member of the agitating Kapu community allegedly committed suicide. Members of the community have been seeking reservation in the backward classes list carrying out protests in this regard. They clashed with the police in Thuni town of East Godavari district on Sunday, injuring 15 policemen. They later set a passenger train on fire and torched a police station, leading to a law and order situation in the district. Here's a detailed report. After a day of violent clashes, an uneasy calm has returned to Thuni town in East Godavari district of Andhra Pradesh. Train and road traffic resumed as members of the Kapu community agreed to end the blockade temporarily. Elaborate security arrangements were made and additional reinforcements sent to the East Godavari district to avoid a repeat of Sunday's incident when quota protests by the Kapu community turned violent. Agitators went on a rampage, setting on fire a passenger train, a police station, police and private vehicles. Chief Minister Chandrababu Naidu took stock of the situation a day later, assuring a commitment to provide reservation to the community. The government will take suitable action in order to provide for reservations in excess of 50%. I am having so much of acquaintance with these people for the last 40 years. Not now. Eppudu vallu manasalo oka positive ness unde tappa edaina unte vallu maatlaade bhasha kuda paurushanga undadu. Alantralu police lu kodtarandi. But leaders of the opposition parties pinned the blame on Chandrababu Naidu, saying if he had fulfilled his pre poll promise, this would not have happened. The recent this 2014 election, there is a lot of promise by the Chandrababu Naidu, saying that I definitely I will give for reservation, yours is the oldest issue. I'll consider, but unfortunately, 18 months is over after he came in power. But he never cared about the issue of the reservation. Chandrababu Naidu promised earlier, before election, that is, before election, he promised like anything. He wanted to uh, give the reservation to the Kapu section. Now it is uh, two and a half years after that, uh, they revolted like this, and then now, it is a failure of the, it is a clear-cut uh, picture, it is a failure of the government as well as the Chandrabhav Naidu. Senior Kapu leader M. Padmanabhan has also threatened to sit on an indefinite fast if the state government does not include the Kapus in the backward classes list by Monday night. The Kapus had aligned with the TDP ahead of the 2014 general elections after Chandrababu Naidu promised to restore their status as backward classes, which had existed till 1960. But after the elections, the TDP government dragged its feet on taking a decision to appoint a judicial commission to make the recommendations. The TDP says it is yet to consider the options on how to give quota to Kapus without upsetting the existing quota to backward classes and to ensure that it withstood legal scrutiny. The TDP government is also wary of similar demands by other communities. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Going on to some economic news now, the Reserve Bank will announce its sixth bi-monthly monetary policy review today amid clamour for rate cut to give a boost to the economy. Experts, however, say that the Apex Court Bank may keep uh, the rates unchanged and possibly watch out for the union budget for a clear roadmap on key macroeconomic parameters. Here's more. 
As inflation has inched upwards, RBI may keep interest rates unchanged in the upcoming monetary policy review on Tuesday. WPI as well as retail inflation have risen. In December, WPI-based inflation stood at minus 0.73%, while retail inflation was at 5.61%. Experts say while RBI may maintain status quo, it is likely to adopt an accommodative stance. I don't feel very optimistic for any further reduction. But the problem is uh, industrial production has gone down. Though it is a month-to-month -month figure, nevertheless, uh, the call of the time is that it should go up. Any reduction and more so, this uh, situation having no hope to me for interest rate reduction. Industrial production plunged to an over four-year low, contracting 3.2% in November, raising expectations of corporate India for a rate cut. However, industry chambers voiced the need for banks to transmit the lower interest rate to borrowers to revive demand and kickstart the investment cycle. The RBI has cut earlier the interest rate, but it, that has not been passed on to the consumers. And the banks say that unless the borrowing rates come down, how can they be passing on the benefits to the consumers? The borrowing rates are still very high. The RBI wants annual inflation at 5% by March 2017, but inflation has been ticking up. The implementation of the 7th Pay Commission, which will raise wages of government employees by nearly 25% and government's efforts to revise budget deficit targets to stimulate demand may drive inflation further beyond the RBI's target. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Well, it's time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Life after death was a cardinal belief in the Harappan civilization. Reflecting this is the skeleton of a middle-aged woman with gold bangles. Excavated from Rakhigari in Haryana, it's an example of the burial practices in those times. Much like the Egyptian mummies, vessels, eatables, ornaments were kept near the dead body in the hope that they would be of use to the person in the next world. Welcome back. You're watching Rajasabha Television. Well, in a tragic incident on Monday, at least 13 college students drowned at a beach in Raigad district of Maharashtra. The victims were part of a group of 130 students of Pune's Abeda Imandar College who had arrived at the beach for a picnic. Five of the students were rescued by local fishermen and authorities, but several students are still reported missing. Here's more. A picnic on the coast of the Arabian Sea turned tragic on Monday as 13 students from a Pune college drowned off the popular Murud Janjira beach in Raigar district. The incident occurred in the afternoon when 18 students ventured into the sea to swim. The students aged between 18 and 20 were part of a group of around 130 from Maharashtra Cosmopolitan Education Society's Abedar Inamdar College. The cause of the tragedy is still not clear. Locals and fishermen rushed for help as soon as the tragedy occurred. They managed to save five students, but 13 of them drowned, while a few students are still untraced. The dead include 10 girls and three boys. The Indian Navy and the Indian Coast Guard deployed helicopters and a speedboat, besides police divers for the combined mega rescue operations. The government has announced a pall of gloom descended over the college following the tragedy. 
Many parents turned up at the college. Tempers ran high as they questioned the college authorities about why the students were not dissuaded from going into the sea, forcing the camp police to be summoned. ये जो घटना हुई है ये मैनेजमेंट के इरिस्पॉन्सिबल जो हरकतें थे बिहेवियर के वजह से घटना हुई है बहुत बड़ा हादसा हुआ है कई पालकों को इसका सदमा बैठा हुआ है पूरा पूना शहर इस वक्त डिप्रेशन में ना ही पूना पूरा भारत को इसका सदमा हुआ है मैनेजमेंट ने अपने साथ में जो बच्चे ले जाए थे उनके साथ में प्रॉपर गार्ड नहीं थे बच्चों के ऊपर प्रॉपर निगरानी नहीं रखी गई बच्चों की प्रॉपर टेक केयर टेकिंग नहीं की गई इसके लिए बच्चों को अपनी जान खोना पड़ी और इसके लिए ये कैंपस के जो जितने भी रिस्पॉन्सिबल है वो सारे इनके ऊपर पहला प्रोसिक्यूशन होना चाहिए पुलिस कंप्लेंट दर्ज होना चाहिए सर्च एंड रेस्क्यू वेंट ऑन टिल लेट इन द इवनिंग एंड विल कंटिन्यू टुडे एज वेल महाराष्ट्र चीफ मिनिस्टर देवेंद्र फडणवीस हैज एक्सप्रेस्ड शॉक एंड ग्रीफ ओवर द इंसिडेंट ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी गाइस लुक नाउ एट द अदर स्टोरीज एक्सपेक्टेड टू मेक न्यूज़ ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ द डे टुडे इन आवर सेगमेंट द डे अहेड Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Coimbatore and Kurikode today. He will inaugurate the ASI Medical College at Vardarajpuram area in the Cotton City and uh, the Vision Conclave in connection with the third edition of the Global Ayurveda Festival in Kurikode. So the Supreme Court will hold an open court reconsideration on a curative petition of gay activists challenging its verdict criminalizing homosexuality in the country today parliament had rejected an opportunity to decriminalize homosexuality in december 2015 a bench headed by chief justice ts thakur will hear the petition filed by gay rights activists and nas foundation the supreme court will commence final hearing from today on various appeals including the one filed by karnataka against the acquittal of aiadmk chief and tamil nadu chief minister j jalalitha and others in the disproportionate assets case going on to some international news now the who has declared zika virus a global health emergency after its link to thousands of suspected cases of birth defects in brazil The declaration will facilitate international coordination of tracking, research and response to the virus. However, Brazil says Rio Olympics will go on as scheduled. I am now declaring that the recent cluster of microcephaly and other neurological abnormalities reported in Latin America following a similar cluster of French Polynesia in 2014 constitutes a public health emergency of international concern the world health organization declaring the mosquito borne zika virus to be an international public health emergency saying the emergency is warranted because of how fast the mosquito borne virus is spreading and its suspected link to spike in babies born with abnormally small heads a condition called microcephaly in brazil and french polynesia However at the moment there would be no restrictions placed on travel or trade at present the most important protective measures are the control of mosquito populations and the prevention of mosquito bites in at risk individuals especially pregnant women the real concern that we have is that there appears to be uh, some evidence of a link between the zika virus uh, and a particular birth defect when a, a pregnant woman contracts the virus um we're deter- trying to there's a lot of research that's being done now and a lot of information that's being collected now to try to determine uh that linkage Brazil says there is no chance that the Rio Olympics will be cancelled because of the Zika virus outbreak it said there was no risk to athletes and spectators except pregnant women at the August event The Brazilian president has authorized health inspectors to use force if necessary to gain access to private buildings to eradicate breeding ground for mosquitoes. 2 lakh troops have been deployed to do household inspections. Country's health minister said the improved testing should allow the country to get a better grip on the epidemic. Então um grande número de mulheres são acometidas eh de mulheres não de pessoas são acometidas com o vírus Zika. adquirem a doença mas não desenvolvem os sintomas. 
The WHO alert puts Zika in the same category of concern as Ebola. It means research and aid will be fast-tracked to tackle the infection. There have been around 4,000 reported cases of microcephaly in Brazil alone since the month of October. Currently, there is no vaccine or medication to cure Zika. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And some more international news now. Several hundred thousand uh, Iowans in 1,861 precincts are casting the first votes today in the race that will determine the 45th president of the United States. The polls show Donald Trump in a tight battle with Ted Cruz to be the Republican nominee. For the Democrats, national frontrunner Hillary Clinton is hoping to hold off Senator Bernie Sanders from Vermont. Iowans visiting the caucus sites to cast the first votes of the 2016 White House race. Iowa voters have begun the nationwide process of choosing a new U.S. president, a state-by-state -state contest over the coming weeks and months. The voter gatherings are taking place in 1,100 schools, churches and other public locations across the Midwestern state. Caucus, it just shows the world and America that Iowa does deserve to be first in the nation because... We're very engaged and very involved with all the politicians that show up here. I'm excited to caucus tonight because I'm a firm believer that if you're educated in voting, that you should exercise that liberty and right. Among the Republicans, polls suggest that Donald Trump, who has never run for any political office before, stands on the verge of a potentially stunning victory. Texas Senator Ted Cruz is banking on a strong turnout from evangelical voters. Iowa caucuses have been notoriously hard to predict. I want to win Iowa. I don't want to be do well. I want to win. I want to win. You know, three weeks ago, I was 11 points down. Now I'm seven or eight points up, and there's been this tremendous swing. If you all agree with me that the stakes have never been higher, this race right now, it's neck and neck. It's all about turnout. This race is a statistical tie between me and Donald Trump. Meanwhile, Democrats are also bracing for a nervous night. The Democrats' far smaller field, three candidates as opposed to 11, appears to be more competitive. Frontrunner Hillary Clinton is hoping to fend off a stiff challenge from insurgent Bernie Sanders. Hillary would want to avoid a humiliating repeat of Iowa caucuses night eight years ago when she was felled by another improbable challenger, Barack Obama. You are selecting not only the next president, but the next commander in chief. I know what it takes because of the incredible, the kind of challenges that come. We will not allow Donald Trump's and the other people. We will not allow them to divide us up. We will stand together. The Iowa caucuses kick off a primary process that leads to the party's formal presidential nominations. The first electoral test in Iowa is seen as key because victory can boost campaign momentum in other states' vote. The first vote in Iowa will be followed in the weeks ahead by more ballots in the 49 other states plus U.S. territories. Each party's nominee will be chosen by the summer and the U.S. will pick its next president in November. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, that's it on this edition of The Breakfast News. Have a good day.